need somebody in your gym 20 hours a week to do nothing but social media and bring leads in. That's the single biggest mistake they make is they don't spend enough time to do it. They don't have somebody dedicated or worse, they try to farm it out. They try to pay somebody outside their gym to do it. And that never works because you can't pick up the culture of the gym. You're listening to episode 154 of the Fitness Business Podcast. We'd like to thank this month's premier podcast partner, Team Rockstar Fit, the mastermind team that helps fitness professionals and studios add nutrition, fitness, and online coaching to their existing business with tools from Beachbody. Visit teamrockstarfit.com. Welcome along to another week of the show. Our special guest this week is Thomas Plummer, and our focus topic is social media marketing. Thomas has been working in the fitness business for over 40 years. He founded the Thomas Plummer Company in 1990, which eventually became the National Fitness Business Alliance in 2003. Currently, Thomas does about 20 workshops a year all around the world and is in front of more than 10,000 people a year through numerous speaking engagements as a keynote speaker, an event host, and a private consultant. He's authored 10 books on the business of fitness, which has remained the best-selling books in the industry for over 20 years. And chances are many of you will already know that Thomas has one of the most popular Facebook sites in the industry with over 100,000 followers. During the show, Thomas tells us why social media should be the primary form of marketing for gym owners. We chat about how to best showcase your customer results online, and he shares his top tips for marketing on social media. Before we move into this week's interview, I want to thank this month's premier podcast partner, Team Rockstar Fit. Do you own a club or a studio? Are you missing out on nutrition solutions and online coaching tools for your clients? Well, here is your answer. Just visit teamrockstarfit.com to schedule in your free consultation. Thomas, a very, very warm welcome to the show. Thank you. A great honor. I'm, I'm looking forward to spending some time with your folks. I, I understand they're all around the world, so I'll try to mess with everybody equally, no matter what country they live in. <laughs> well, we appreciate that very much. Now, I wanted to get you on today, and I know that there's any number of topics that we could have spoken about today, but specifically, I'm hoping that we can focus around the topic of social media marketing. Now, I read that you were at, had actually said that clubs should spend 100% of their marketing budget on social media. Is that correct? Am I correct in saying that? Yes. Even uh, two years ago, I would have hesitated on that. But we're finding that most all types of gym, even the considered the mainstream big box type gym, the 50,000 square feet or 5,000 meter gym is is just as equally now kind of trapped by the social media aspect. You have to do it. The smaller gyms, the the new next generation training gyms, we're budgeting on those about $3,000 uh, per month. Um, and it works 3,000, 3,000 pounds, 3,000 euros, no matter where you are, Australian dollars. It's all about the same. And we are committing 100% of what we're doing to social media. And it just, it works. It's proven the market that we're chasing for most gyms lives on social media. We know that that's where they are, the type of client that we want, and we're targeting them as specifically as we can. Do you find that that 100% applies regardless of the, the demographic that the facility is actually targeting? If you're a, a lower end gym, meaning you're chasing that, you're the, the alleged value gym, you're the nine or $19 person, you're, you're not going to likely find your person on uh, social media. That person would be old school, traditional, uh, direct mail, some advertising. Of course, there's exception to every rule. I have some very successful training gyms that actually do full pages in local magazines, which breaks our rule, but they're the one of the exceptions to the rule in that case. There's there's two types of clients that gyms appeal to. You're either the, as they called Neo, I think one of the better books I've ever read in the last 10 years uh, is on marketing. It was called a 113 Million Markets of One crap name, but a very, very good book. And, uh, Sorry, who's the author of that, Thomas? 
Uh, I don't even remember the, the person's name, but it's uh, right. I'll look it up. Yeah, yeah, 113 million markets of one. And it's, the, he divides the, into any Western, any civilized, you know, Westernized country, there's two types of clients. There's one third in our country, in the States, one third of the people they call Neos. They're people that live on social media, that they're um, a little more sophisticated client. They support traditional training gyms. They don't care so much about the price. They care, care much more about what they get for the money. They're the people that eat, you know, traditionally nicer restaurants, will buy a decent bottle of wine. You know, they're the person that would have three or four different Apple or Mac products. They're, they're, there's a whole grouping that they put together. And two-thirds of the population in most markets are people that look for bargains. They're cheap. They're the traditional person. I think where mainstream people really mess it up right now is that they assume that they market price to everyone. And, and, and there's a lot of people that have a certain degree of money that don't want to set foot in a cheap gym because there's no people like them in the gym. And, and if you have money, uh, any degree of money, price is not your deciding factor. It's what do I get for the money? So we're, we're taking the people that we want live on social media according to this thought process. And these are the people that we chase uh, hard. Uh, the average person in this group's on Facebook something like 56 minutes a day. They're on Instagram 32 minutes a day. We know where they live. We know what they make. And it's usually the one-third of our population that surrounds our gyms. So we chase that person, but they do not respond to traditional media. They do not respond to traditional marketing. They don't, they don't respond to direct mail, newspaper ads. They don't, they're just, they don't care about any of that stuff because they're not looking for bargains. They're looking for what's next, what's quality. Where am I going to get the most for this? How am I going to solve this problem about my weight or my health? So that type of client lives on social media, and that's why we put so much emphasis in targeting that client. Thomas, I'd like us to talk about the different stages of buying a membership. So putting ourselves in the shoes of a gym owner, of a facility owner, can we really break this down quite specifically? And perhaps you can talk us through how we can actually use social media to market to prospects who are at different buying stages. So starting off with people that are considering starting a new program. There's, if you look at, in, in, in the States, for example, there's 19% of the people that belong to gyms. That's 81% of the people that hate gyms, have never been in a gym, have had a very horrible experience in a gym. Uh, Australia, I believe it's about 12%. Uh, UK is probably 10%. <clears throat> that fitness is still a wild and booming potential business. The problem that most gyms make is they only market to the people that already understand fitness. Mm. So you're it's literally you're trying to pry somebody out of your gym, you know, somebody else's gym and bring them to your gym. So marketing to the first thing you have to do is, okay, who am I chasing? Are they a member of a gym or not? Most of the time, the answer is no, they're not. So when you market something like a price discount or something like that, you're assuming the person has already made up his mind. But in your country, approximately 88% of the people don't even belong to gym. So price has no bearing on their willingness to even consider joining a gym. They, there's nothing in it for them. They're not, they're not to the price point yet. So first basic rule of marketing is it should develop future interest for your gym. It should talk to the people not into the gym and overcome those barriers. Uh, so we run simultaneous tracks in most of our, our client clubs around the world. I, I have clients in 31 countries now, and I do workshops at least in four to five different countries a year. And when we reach out to people, we, we really chase them from somewhat of a different angle. We, we assume that that client either has zero experience, and then we run testimonials. If I have a successful gym in London with a thousand clients or 500 clients or even 300, I'm going to let those clients speak for me because they speak to the 90% of the people that have never set foot in a gym. If this 40 year old female that's 20 pounds overweight has not died in that gym and she's speaking highly and her life has changed, I want her to be the front of my company. So uh, everybody kind of ignores that. They, they neglect the fact that you have successful clients that can speak for you. For the people that are in the gym, we run six weeks or 21 day or 15 day short term programs because those people that respond to that are somewhat familiar with the gym. They're not terrified of the gym. They probably have belonged to the gym or even currently do, but they'll show up at your gym for a six week type of makeover program or something like that. 
So we, by using a shorter term trial, more aggressive trial, we speak to the people in the gym by using a softer trial, like a 30 day and speak to the person uh, tied to testimonials and one minute videos on Instagram, one minute videos on Facebook, all those type of things that we can, we can actually chase both markets and hit people from two different stages of their willingness to join a gym. Thomas, how about when it comes to actually converting people, and this is a trickier one, converting people who are members of other gyms? We love them. There are many times, that's where most of the modern training gyms, there's clients. I, uh, I have a number of clients that travel and teach with me. There's, uh, I have a guy, Rick Mayo, that's been, spe- that's been to Australia a number of times and spoken, but he has uh, 7,500 square feet about 600, you know, or, I'm sorry, about 750 meters. And he has uh, right around, I think, 400 clients now, but he did 2.2 million last year. The uh, Frank Nash is a guy with uh, 5,500 square feet, 550 meters, and he did about 1.7 million last year with 350 clients. They're, they're marketing what they're trying to accomplish is far different than what a mainstream gym would try to accomplish. They're, what they're trying to do, how they're trying to bring people in, who they're talking to specifically changes dramatically. So they're, they're, they're definitely they're running separate business plans and separate ways to approach the client and think about the client. So if I'm those guys, I'm stealing from the mainstream gyms. Because if there's a gym 50,000 square feet in downtown Sydney, perhaps an old uh, fitness first, and they, they have 3,000 members, probably 10% of those members are people that are unhappy in that gym, that want training, that would thrive in a, in a small mainstream training gym. And I'm going to steal those people all day long because I could provide with 400 clients better service than they can in a gym of 3,000 people. Because they don't want all the space and equipment. They want the, the advanced coaching. They want the coaching experience. So, yeah, we're, we're raiding gyms all day long because there's so many people unhappy in the product they bought. They're willing to come to us. Thomas, you mentioned earlier about posting, I think you said, a one-minute video on Instagram. Can we just dive for a second into video testimonials? Because I think that a lot of owners are unsure as to how long those testimonials should be. And I, and I know you sort of said like a quick hit one minute. So talk us through, if we want to showcase those results that you were talking about, what is there an ideal length of video? Are we assuming that it should be video over photos when possible? How should they best showcase those results? Well, let me answer that by uh, back up just a, a step. Uh, th- those are one of four to six things I would have floating every month. So if I think of uh, my market, as um, somewhere either by postal code or distance from the gym, usually seven to 10 miles. We're going to up to maybe 10K for the people that think in those realms. If this is a lake and I get up in the morning and set a little paper boat and just put it on the lake and the wind blows it, well, that's, that's a Facebook post and it just takes off and Facebook sends it. I'm going to probably boost that by mileage from my gym or by postal code, depending on where I live. If I'm in the city postal code, if I'm more rural miles or more uh, metro, meaning uh, suburbs, I'm going to send it out there. And then I might send another one out and just set it in motion for a week. Uh, So I might send a testimonial that goes for seven days for, say, $10 a day to boost it. I might do a fitness tip that goes for three days and it goes out for $5. I might send a 21-day shred that goes out. I might send a recipe, very nicely done, with nice video on that, and I'll send that out. I might leave that out for a full seven days. So during a month's time, I always have somewhere between four to six different little boats floating on that pond, so to speak. And they're, they're just taking off all over. The thing is, the wind blows each one in different ways. So if there's 100,000 people on Facebook that live within a 10 miles or you know, somewhere between 6 to, to 12K from there. Uh, if I'm looking at that, then I, I just keep these constantly in, in motion all month. If I have one that's strong, I might boost it for an extra $5 a day because it's drawing people back to my website. If I have a weak one, I might take it down in three days and put up a fresh one that goes out for another seven days. So the skill set in social media marketing is can I keep all of these floating at the same time for 30 days? 
And uh, if you think about the little pond analogy, then I've got boats all over the pond, but they don't all go together. They just sit everywhere. So I'm hitting everybody in my market from different angles for the full 30 days. So my goal is to try to just suck the oxygen out of my competition. If I just absolutely, it's hard for them to compete, if, especially if they're only running one thing or they're trying different things, because I can actually destroy them. I, I can just I, I just take the oxygen out to the point that they can't breathe in the marketplace because every time somebody picks up their Facebook, uh, there I am with a, a testimonial, but I'm not in their face. There's a nice recipe with really no sales pitch back to the club. Just click, go back and sign up for a 30 day trial. So that said, my videos are a big part of that. And those have we, we shoot those as a minute because Instagram, as of today, says that you have to be at one minute. So when we shoot them and edit them, we just shoot them for that and Facebook. So we just download them directly onto Facebook, directly on Instagram. But to keep it the editing short, we just do them as a minute. And there, if you want to see good examples of these, let me give you two of these. And your readers can go anywhere in the world and look these up. One is a place called Seacoast, S-E-A, Coast Kettlebell. And they are in a place called Dover, New Hampshire, which is the northeast part of the States. Seacoast Kettlebell. When you look at them, go to the website, hit every button, look at every video, and just pound on the site. And then look at how they get people from Facebook and Instagram, which are the only two that we recommend. How do they get people from Facebook and Instagram back to the website? And then go to look at a place called um, Results Driven Fitness Systems results driven fitness system and do the same thing and look how people are taken from facebook and instagram back to the website the results driven people actually have something called the people of fitness which is a very strong so answering your question from a previous the people on there are old school photographs with three paragraphs of copy and the, you're going to see the seacoast guy a little more video driven so you're going to see two different approaches but both gyms are very successful financially uh, the Seacoast guy does about 1.3 million in a town of 30,000 people. I would also look at Frank Nash Training Systems. He's changed the name to Stronger Personal Training. So you're going to find it either in the Frank Nash or Stronger Pers Personal Training. And he is doing heavy testimonials and video uh, videos on, for example, on recipes. And he has maybe 400 clients now. And again, is doing about three, uh, 1.7 million, probably do 2 million this year. All of them are social media exclusively. All of them are driving them back to using testimonials and a combination of some type of uh, shorter term intense trial. Thomas, you mentioned in there that the two platforms that you recommend are Facebook and Instagram. And right. about 12 months ago, we had Sue B. Zimmerman on the show, the Instagram expert, and we talked about the importance of utilizing Instagram for marketing your fitness business. And at that time, Instagram stories was, was, was only just kind of being established and there's been a lot of development since that time. What's your thought on utilizing Instagram stories for business promotion? They, when they, they did that, for one, they just crushed Snapchat with that. That was a, a backbreaker at yeah. that point. But uh, uh, we like it. Uh, Instagram is under 30 traditionally. As I said before, the average person is in our category is on it about 32 minutes a day. So the, the, the strategy is different. You're targeting something that's a quick visual gone. So if you're going to do something like story, which has a, obviously a finite limit on it, uh, I'm still going to post those early in the week and then again on Sunday because we do get a certain people that will leisurely kick back a little more on a, the weekend versus their, in their business life during you know, a little earlier in the week. So I like I like the tool and it's it's a, it's a wonderful tool, but I still can't neglect on there the fact that I have to put stuff up that lives for a little longer that can be boosted and promoted for a little longer versus something that comes down in a short period of time. When they did that, they gave us some nice tools and took Snapchat out of it, and that's why we don't use anything up. I'd rather them focus very intensely on fewer things. So if you've got a good WordPress or Squarespace site. You've got Instagram and you have Facebook. For most people, if they just did that work, that would feed their gems beyond belief. A quick technical question relating to the video conversation, Thomas. Is it okay for us to be shooting those videos that you're talking about on our iPhones or do we need to be hiring a professional team to come in and, and help us with that? 
Uh, iPhones from seven or b- above. The eights are beautiful. The tens are amazing. We teach social media schools where we have 18 to 20 people locked down for three days. We go, we make them build stuff there, but we make them shoot video. We make them shoot stills, make them write. Uh, we get into their personal brands and what we're trying to accomplish there, how to build their own identity through public figure, the business's identities. It just goes on and on. But uh, we don't let anybody show up unless they're fully mapped up. You know, bring your iPhone and bring your, your laptop because you bring all this alien stuff that doesn't talk to each other. It's very tough. That The Mac phones or iPhones are just right now, they're, the cameras on the 8 and 10 are as good as you probably paid $3,000 for less than five years ago. So instead of bringing video guys and waiting to get that edited, spending that money, just grab your phone, learn how to use it well, uh, which is you can go to, you know, just Google uh, iPhone top 10, you know, tips on using your iPhone and uh, for camera or iPhone video and just 15, 20 articles pop up for each for video or the, the still photos. And it's amazing how good you can get with these things if you practice and it gives you on the rule of thirds. It gives you on using the phone horizontally for 99% of your shots. It talks about tripods. It talks about lighting. And if you spend a couple hours on a Saturday afternoon, you can be a, an iPhone ninja. But, you know, two glasses of wine into it, you're a pro. <laughs> it's just it's amazing what you can do with that. So, yeah, to answer your question directly, I, I wish people would just concentrate on their iPhones, get a decent one, learn to use them and just shoot every day versus perfect that you may never get to. Thomas, let's talk about apps because there are constantly, there's constantly new technology coming our way every single day at the moment. Can you give us your favorite or your most recommended apps for gym owners and managers to use for their social media marketing? Uh, yeah, I'm going to, you're probably not asking the right guy in that because I'm going to go very old school. It's just we, the apps are tending to distract me from the mission at hand. So if I've got an iPhone and a MacBook Pro and I'm sitting and I get up, go shoot, I, I, I would learn how to stage the lighting. So I'll spend, I'll go to Amazon and get a lighting kit for a hundred bucks. I set the lighting up. I shoot the person in the interview. I learned to do voiceover, meaning I also shoot. And as you can on this Seacoast Kettlebell site, for example, there's a woman named Taryn on here and she's talking, but then she's also talking while she over her working out. And if I can learn to shoot that, which I can in 20, 30 minutes, why would I mess that up with trying to put special effects in it, trying to put too many uh, changing the dynamics of the picture through color, uh, doing those type of things. So if I've got the phone and I've got a ability and I, I photo to edit well, and I've got a cheap lighting system, I'm just going to go for sheer volume. I, I think most of the apps are a distraction and the people that use those tend to do some of the more arty stuff, which is beautiful. If you're an Instagram person and you're trying to make your living with a million followers on Instagram, the apps add a lot more dynamic to that. But if I'm trying to make my living marketing, we forget that it only has one purpose. I need to talk to people. I need qualified leads, potential business in my gym. And you're either effective at that or you're not. You're either good at it or you're not. Anything distracts it, don't do it. So I, if I run six little boats out on the pond for the month and I've got these things going all over, spending about $3,000 total, did I get enough leads in to grow my business or did I not? So my marketing that worked or didn't. Anything that distracts me from that mission, I'm probably not going to do or I'm going to do that first with the basic tools, and if I want to add a little art to it later or get apps that kind of might make these a little more efficient, which I haven't seen that they do, I'm old school. Show me the money. Show me the numbers. You know, get off your ass and just do it every day. Don't show me how pretty it is. Show me how well it works. Thomas, we are currently at the start of 2018, and you have the platform. You've got the microphone to speak to gym owners, gym managers, facility owners all across the globe right now. What would be your absolute top three tips for them to market on social media? Ooh, that's a that's a very good question because obviously from hearing me so for the last 20 minutes, you know that talking is not my problem. Uh, so <laughs> let's see. The first one is 
I, I've got to, the trial memberships of some type are what people respond to, not price specials. So especially the clients we want in any type gym. So if I'm going to run this, I'm going to come up with something like a, a, a different type of trial. So it might be a 15-day quick start, 21-day shred, six-week challenge. It might be a 30-day, very soft trial aimed at people that are terrified. Uh, those trials bring in different people, different folks to respond to those. So tip one would be master a trial. But understand that I can run a 30-day trial and chase a soft market, people that are afraid that uh, using those words, you know, if you failed in a gym before, are you afraid of gyms? You've never set foot in one. Well, here, we've got this real gentle 30-day. Or get your butt moving. We've got a 21-day program. You know, we're chasing 10 pounds in 10 days. Move your ass. Let's go. But so tip one is use the trial that target it toward different people and understand that the trials have a different response rate depending on who you're talking to. So that, that would be number one. Number two is I would look at, I would move away from emphasis just solely on pounding the next six week program. I, I want to develop a long term awareness in my market over time based on I believe the testimonials are the strongest tool. You've had a successful gym. Let your people speak for you. So I'm going to, I'm going to put out five, eight, many as I might put as many as 12 to 15 a month, different testimonials in play on social media uh, to try to get people back because it changes the market. You're going to get by Facebook cracking down on businesses you're going to speak to that one third of the population that new economic order is referred to in the book. You're going to actually be able to talk to somebody that nobody else has even thought about talking to yet. So the testimonials bring us in. So that point number two would be to use the uh, testimonials as a tool, but understand that there's two types. There's the videos and there's the old school, like you'll find on the results driven fitness system. There's old school where you'll see, uh, a really nice, high-quality picture done with three or four paragraphs. And the third tip would be a combo tip. You need somebody in your gym 20 hours a week to do nothing but social media and bring leads in. That's the single biggest mistake they make is they don't spend enough time to do it. They don't have somebody dedicated. Or worse, they try to farm it out. They try to pay somebody outside their gym to do it. And that never works because you can't pick up the culture of the gym. I can have 10 gyms in Sydney in 10 different areas, and they'll have 10 different memberships, 10 different cultures, 10 different training philosophies. So my social media, I need a dedicated person for 20 hours a week, and it's going to cost most of the gyms listening to this about $3,000 per month to get all those things out and running them every month to get enough leads to feed the gym, to turn your gym into a million-dollar gym. I think that last point, Thomas, that you make is absolutely essential. And I think you're right when you say, you know, a lot of people just outsource that role or, or don't dedicate the um, or allocate the finances to actually having someone in that role. And yet having someone sitting within your facility, the only way they're going to be able to absorb and understand that culture as well is being in your gym or in your facility to be able to create that social media that you talk about. So I think I want to thank you so much for sharing that because I think it's an element that a lot of people are unsure of how much time should be dedicated to that role and probably haven't necessarily identified that it's so important to have that person actually within your facility. Uh, funny thing on that person, we found out that they're traditionally somebody in there. We have people as young as 17 years old doing this. We're getting them out of tech schools for projects, and they're brilliant because they they just – that's what they're working on. That's how they think. That's how they spend their life every day. But mostly we're finding that these are younger trainers that love social media and want to be coached up on it. So they'll do the study. They'll work with some of our people to learn how to do it. But they'll do social media for a little higher hourly wage during the week, but they'll also then be trainers for another 10 to 15 hours a week. So we're, that's how most people are solving the problem is we're keeping them on house, but they spend 20 hours a week doing that. But then they get to train and stuff. So we're getting good people. We're building interchangeable systems. So if they leave, we're, you know, we're still using the iPhone. We're still using the Mac. So if they stay for a year and leave, fine. If not, we've got them because we own the 
the, the how to do it, it's scalable. So that's been working out brilliantly because all we're doing is paying a trainer an extra five to ten dollars an hour to do that. Great one. That's a great one. So Thomas, we're going to be seeing you in Australia very soon in just a couple of months time. Do you want to tell everyone what you'll be speaking on at Filex 2018? Uh, everything. <laughs> According to the agenda that they, it was, it was one of the funniest I've been speaking around the world for way too many years. And the conversation I had with uh, Ryan at um, Filex this year was one of the funniest ones I think I've ever had my entire career. I said, what do you want me to do? And he goes, anything you want to do. And I said, well, you got to narrow that down. He says, you can do as much as you want to do. Just come and do what, what do you want to do? So uh, over four days, I'm doing everything. Uh, so I'm doing a pre-con. And that will be normally the first one I did that a number of years ago was an hour. I think I'm doing three hours on this one. Uh, I'm doing a six hour complete business of fitness workshop on, I believe, the second day. I'm doing a a shorter, maybe an hour, an hour and 15 minutes on, I believe it is, on social media. But I'm also going to blend social media from a different angle into the six hour workshop. And then the last day I'm doing sort of a keynote thing, kind of a wrap up motivational piece on what training is and should be and that type of thing. So I'm doing motivational business, skill sets, how the world is going to change. What's next is my theme for the pre-con, which I, they tend to draw some of the bigger chain owners and stuff. So we're going to be talking, the last time I was there, we talked about the death of the big box club. This time we're going to talk about what's next. So how the world is going to change in fitness in the next five years, how the gyms are going to evolve, who's going to fail, who's going to make it, what skill sets you're going to have to have to go forward. Uh, That type of thing will be part of that pre-con, and I'm looking forward to that. But the real business system, the heart of this, and it's kind of a strange thing. It's been a good run on this, but most of the successful training gyms in the world have come through my workshops at one time or another. So the some of the most successful guys in Poland, Guatemala, South Africa, Vietnam, places all around the world have all come through the workshops. Have been part of the what we teach. So the business platform that's made so many people so successful. That's what we're really going to do on the uh, the second day, and that's the six hour venue. And they tend to limit that. The last time I was there, we had a, an uproar because they booked about 135 people for it and put me in a room of 80. So we had people sitting on the floor. We had, it was a very stressful, it was just a, a bad scheduling event that day by the convention people, not by the Phylex people, but uh, they just kind of messed up the rooms and it was, but the Phylex people hustled and saved it and did some very good work. So I, I think overall, Phylex is the, um, of all the shows I've been to, um, and I told them years ago, I believe it's the, it's the best show I've ever been to as far as the way they treat the people that attend it. They treat their speakers um, far superior to shows like Ursa. And I think the new ownership now is just going to do a better job because they're guys that have been around for a while. I, I think it's one of the best shows in the world, if not the best show. So I hope everybody who's listening shows up for this thing. It's just, it's, it's, it's just a brilliant venue. Um, I'm going to, I've got enough stuff to keep everybody busy for four days, just on my own track, let alone whatever else you do there. So uh, if you want to learn how to do business, come see me, social media. If you want to hear a little bit of the future, make sure you get in that pre-con somehow, but uh, there's plenty going to be done there. And it's, I think it's going to, it's just a great show and we're going to have a lot of fun. For all the Aussies that are listening at the moment, I just want to second what Thomas is saying. And this year we have a spectacular lineup on that business day. You talked about the the pre-session and that is the Thursday. And if you haven't checked out the schedule, having Thomas here is an amazing privilege. And that is, that is a really fantastic opportunity to get along because I mentioned the business summit because it is a one day where you can, you know, you can get a huge amount of information. It is additional to your kind of standard ticket for Filex for the other three days, but I can assure you that it is worthwhile. We've got Thomas on the lineup. We've got Todd Durkin, Emma Barry and Amanda Stevens. It's a really broad uh, mix of speakers this year and a very, very valuable day to be spending. So I do encourage everyone 
purchase the, um, the ticket for the main convention, but come along and join us on the day of the business summit as well, because it's going to be a fantastic way to kick off the, uh, the 2018 convention. So Thomas, I want to say thank you so much. I'm super excited to be meeting you in a couple of months time. I can't actually believe that we haven't met yet, but I'm so excited that you're coming to Sydney and thank you for joining us today to talk about social media marketing. Oh, what a pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, an honor to be part of the show. I know you're, you have a long history with that show. I believe 150 interviews so far. You're probably one of the most successful, if not the most successful in the world. So doing this, so uh, an honor to be part of the show. Thank you for considering me. I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing everybody over there in just a couple of months. Thank you so much, Thomas. Are you interested in increasing your center's income and your trainer's income from small group training? Tribe Team Training is the new way to get more members engaged in small group training and paying extra. Click the Tribe Team Training link in the show notes or go to tribeteamtraining.com.au forward slash podcast for your free formula to see how much income you can make from small group training. Get ready for this week's bonus segment, your extra injection of information, education, and inspiration to strengthen your fitness business. Now, in case you haven't heard the news, we have launched a new page on our website called FBP Family Discounts. The page is full of great discounts and offers on products and services from our wonderful podcast partners and suppliers from the fitness industry across the world. You can go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash discounts to check out all the great offers that are available. Precore Quick Fire 5. Our pre-call Quickfire 5 guest is Ed Delahenty, who is a club general manager at Good Life Health Clubs. Our main interview next week is an In the Trenches show, where Ed shares his experiences working through multiple roles in a big box gym during his journey to becoming the club general manager. Here is this week's pre-call Quickfire 5 with Ed Delahenty. Hey, Ed, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me, Chantel. Let's get stuck straight into your pre-core quick fire five. Tell everyone, why do you do what you do? I'm very lucky to be in an industry that's so unique. I do what I do because I have a passion for fitness and because I enjoy working with people. It's just so satisfying to see people grow and develop. And what's one ritual that helps you become better at what you do? Always build new relationships in this industry. You just never know what might happen in the future. So what's one app or system that you use to stay in control of your workload? I've been using iScanner as of late. Um, what iScanner does is it gives you the ability to scan documents, even scan the computer screen with your mobile phone. Uh, and then you're able to sign the screen if you need to sign anything on that document or you're, you're able to forward that document and send it in an email and it would look exactly like you just put it through the photocopy machine as an attachment. And what's one book, podcast or blog that you'd recommend and why? I, uh, one that comes to my mind is Sports Leaders in Success. It describes 55 top sports leaders and how they achieve greatness. And what's a topic that you're going to be focusing on in your main interview next week? Uh, the importance of developing people to gain success and what sort of things we've done in the trenches in the past to get to where we are today. I'm really excited to chat to you about that. So, Ed, thank you so much for joining me today for the pre-call Quick Fire 5. Thank you. Before we finish off today's show, a reminder that all of the resources, the links, and the transcript for today's show can be found at fitnessbusinesspodcast.com. A big thank you to all of our partners for their support, and thank you to our foundation partner, Active Management. Go to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active for a free business development ebook. Thank you so much for joining me for another week of the show. I look forward to seeing you next week. And in the meantime, remember what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into lives of others. 